For about a year I wanted to get into the wet plate collagen process, but was intimidated by all the variables that come with it. Mixing collagen, pouring plates, gassing exposure, varnishing, all that stuff. I needed some hand holding to start and there came the opportunity. Max Zeitler announced his first workshop on the Instagram. I've been following Max for quite some time and admire his insect series. The workshop was meant for 4 people, but in the end it was just 2 of us, Ushi and myself. So it was pretty much private workshop. Max prepared the workshop pretty well. He introduced us with the history of the collagen process and shown some examples of amber types and tin types, and also told us how collagen sees the light and some other aspects, like how collagen changes the color with age and how to operate a large format camera. Although I knew quite a lot about the process to that date, I discovered something new as well. Collagen is sensitive to mostly blue and UV light, so I was pleased to find out that you can use a lot of fluorescent light to expose collagen. That way I can start experimenting in the controlled environment. Just look at this massive octobox. Because of the reduced spectrum, not every lens works the same. You're going to need an uncoated lens to get the full spectrum. That is another reason why Collagen photographers chase after brass lenses. As the second part, we've mixed all the chemicals ourselves. Collagen, developer, fixer and even the silver bath. We couldn't use our Collagen since it has to sit for at least one day, so Max gave us ready to use solution from his stash. Then we've poured our first plates, but before using collagen we try it with sugared water. It's not that thick, so the experience is not quite the same, but it was a great icebreaker. Of course, Max would show how to hold a smaller plate, pinch in a corner and a bigger plate like a dish. In the end we tried photographing still life, a portrait and something outdoors. Max removed just enough obstacles to get us going and avoid frustration. He would estimate exposure time for us, which I believe would have otherwise required a lot of trial and error. I think estimating exposure could be a topic for a whole new workshop. But now, we know in how to mix, pour and varnish can spend all the time nailing exposure assured all other pieces of the puzzles are in place. Oh yeah, varnishing. To me it's even more intimidating than the whole part before. This is the step where you can actually destroy an otherwise perfect picture. You have to coat your plates with a resin varnish to preserve them. Trouble is that this step involves one more variable, temperature. You need to heat the varnish and the plate, then pour varnish like you did collagen. It looks like a lot of trouble using the alcohol burner, but you can actually use your toaster from your kitchen instead. That was the end of the day. Needless to say, Max calculated time so that varnish cooled down and I safely made it to the airport to catch my flight in time. I had a great day, met two wonderful people, made three plates and learned a new skill. Max and Tushi, if you're watching this, thank you.